Okay, and we're, we're on verse 9 of, of chapter 5 of Matthews. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be children of God. In Matthews ten, thirty four, it says, Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And this is an example of what Jesus was talking about in Luke chapter 12, verses 49 through 53. It says, I got this out of the Living Bible so we can understand it a little better. I have come to set the world on fire, and I wish it were already burning. I have a terrible baptism of suffering ahead of me, and I'm under a heavy burden until it is accomplished. Do you think I come to bring peace to the earth? No. I have come to divide people against each other. From now on, families will be split apart, three in favor of me and two against, or two in favor and three against. Father will be divided against son, and son against father, and mother against daughter, and daughter-in-law against mother, <clears throat> and mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. So this peace that the Lord's talking about is not the peace we're thinking about. The peace he's, he's going to be talking about is this, the Word. Sometimes conflicts between believers and non-believers, they last a long time. They last a long time, and sometimes they can't be fixed. Because uh, some people, once they get into what they believe in, they don't get out of it. It'd be kind of like me. If someone's trying to change me, I'm, I'm here to stay. What I believe is here, and I'm here to stay now. If someone else with another gospel came to me, they'd have a hard time, very hard time changing me. I, in fact, I believe it's impossible to change me. But when you get two people, one's a believer, one's a non-believer, a lot of times that peace is not going to come. Because this is, this is the peace of God right here. The disciples, the true disciples of God, it's a price we're willing to pay. It's a price we're willing to pay to believe in the Lord. Because there's, like, I don't know if I said that to, to this class, but my sister and I, she's Catholic, and we started talking, and by the time we were through, she didn't talk to me for another year. These things happened. Uh, now, she did come along, and, and in fact, she started making my home Bible study that we had. She started coming to it. Uh, I think when my sister was, I was telling her these things. It was from here, but I was just telling her, but when at the Bible study, I would go to the verses, you know, she saw it in the Bible, and I believe that's why she was able to accept it. And sometimes that's with pigs, you know, I tell my, the guys in my Bible study, I said, listen, don't go tell anybody what Jesse said or the pastor said, because that don't have no power behind it. When you go up to them and say, the Word of God says, and you can tell them what the Bible says, now you now you got some power behind what you're saying. But if you go to somebody and say, well, my teacher or my preacher you know, it doesn't, that doesn't carry that much because it's just coming from another man. But if you can, that's why we have to hunger for the word so we know what's in here. That way, when we do witness to somebody, we can say, hey, the word of God says. So, this sword that it's talking about is not a sword made of steel, it's the word of God. Just like Hebrews 4.12 says that the word is a two edged sword. If it was bringing peace like the Jews wanted, then he won. Then then the Lord would have brought a sword, a sword of steel. If the if if the Jews knew what this piece was, well, they did. But they thought Jesus was coming with a sword, but it wasn't the sword they wanted. The Word of God. That's the, that's the sword Jesus was talking about. But that's not the sword they wanted. They wanted him to bring a, a sword of of steel to go to battle. To do away with all these people they've had to live under. I mean, they've they've always been under another nation. They wanted to be free of that. When Peter went to defend Jesus that night when he was arrested, what did he do? Peter pulled a sword out, cut the guy's ear off. And Matthew twenty six fifty two it says, For all that for all they that take the sword shall perish with, with the sword. But the Lord is saying here, if you want to do it your way, Peter was attacking it his way. The Lord is saying, well, if you want to do it your way, go ahead. But you're going to die that way. You want to live by the sword? You're going to die by the sword. The Lord is saying, no, that's not the sword we got to live. 
live by. The sword we live by is the Word of God. And the peace right here, peace right here means you're right with God. That you're right with God. And in John 16, 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So he's saying, don't worry about what the world throws at you. Don't worry about what the world throws at you. This stuff that's going on right now, and, and we owe so much money, we're so much in debt. I'm talking about America. I'm telling you, when you're living for the Lord, that don't, that don't affect us. The Lord is our king. We're living in his world. Even though we're still on this earth, we're living under Jesus' kingdom here on earth. Okay, so whatever's happening out there, the Lord takes care of us. All right, remember that. In Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 37, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Amen? Amen. All this stuff, we don't need to worry about all this stuff. The Lord's already made us winners here. He's already, you know, we've we've got the victory over whatever happens on this earth. And believe me, it's going to get worse. This is not going to get better. It's going to get worse. But you know what? I have peace. I have peace because I know the Lord's going to take care of us. Well, he's Amen. a better gentleman. Mm-hmm. Than oh, for sure. <laughs> In Galatians 1.20, And having made peace through the blood of, the, of his cross, and by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in the earth or things in the heaven. God started the world with peace, with Adam and Eve. And then, of course, we messed up. As Adam and Eve, we messed up. But then the Lord, the Lord's going to end the world with peace. So right now we're in the, in between the two pieces. He started it, and then we messed it up. But it's going to come back to peace again. Peace. Uh, Jesus made peace at the cross for those who believe in Him. You have to believe in Him to get this peace from the Lord. Now we have a peace that the lost people don't have. We have a peace that they don't have. I, I really don't know if we recognize that. We have a peace that the world does not have. Uh, in Genesis 1.31 it says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. So the Lord started everything good. Wasn't he talking about Eve? Well, he was, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was. He, he, uh, this is after he finished creating everything. Right. He said, uh, well, everything that he, he created, he saw it was very good. If you don't have peace within yourselves... If you don't have peace within yourselves, it's because either you don't believe in this or you don't have the Holy Spirit. Uh, There's people who have the Holy Spirit, but they don't go by this. So you can have the Holy Spirit, but if you don't know this, you're not going to get that peace. We've got to know the Word of God to have the peace. We've got to know what He says in here so we can accept and take it. If you want this peace... You got to know this. Not just get born again and, and have the Holy Spirit come in you, and then that's it. Well, you got to know your, who your Father is and what He can do. That's why it's so important that we hunger for this Word. Just like I said, one of the Beatitudes was hunger and thirst. We need to hunger and thirst after this. This is our life right here. This is our food. Knowing that you have been forgiven for your sins. <laughs> what kind of, I mean, <laughs> is that peace or not? Knowing that the Lord forgives us of our sins. And then the, the number one sin. He forgives us of our sins that we commit while we're here. But he's forgiven us of the number one sin. And that number one sin is when we rejected him. Because we were, I guess most of us, I'm not sure, but I think most of us rejected him for a part of our lives. Me, I was, I was 25 years old before I got born again. So for, until I was 25, I rejected the Lord. But is that peace? Is that peace? Hey. That is one thing. I know when I gave my life to the Lord, that was a peace I never understood until after I started reading and stuff. Man, that is a peace. 
Amen. It is a peace. Knowing that you can go to him and ask for forgiveness. Yes. I mean, true forgiveness. It, it comes from the Lord and only him. I'm, I'm sorry, but for the Catholics who might be listening to this CD, peace doesn't come by saying so many Hail Marys, Our Fathers. Yeah. It don't come that way. Yeah. It comes from true repentance, and then the Lord takes care of it. Yeah. Now, in Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 36, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person, but in every nation that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. Being a peacemaker is showing the peace of God that is in you. That's part of being a peacemaker. It's showing the lost people. The peace of God that's in us. If you're not a peacemaker, like I said, either you're not a Christian or you just or you don't know the Word of God. You gotta know the Word of God. Or you do know the God, Word of God and you're just being disobedient. Alright? So that's when we do that, if if those who do know and we're just being on dis, disobedient, then praise God, you know, from the heart, ask the Lord to forgive us. He is, he is ready to forgive us. The Bible says he's, all, he's ready to forgive us. All we need to do is come to Him. That's when the, when the Bible, when this is called the gospel, and the gospel means what? Good, good news. news. This is nothing but filled with good news. I mean, if we really read and understand what we're reading, man, you know, this is better than the 6 o'clock news, 10 o'clock news. This is the best news. I don't care what book you can get. None of them. Not one book. Other than this one, are you going to get peace? I don't care who wrote it. Put everything in it. Everything. Everything's in it. Everything we need is in it. In Philippians 4 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, he said, do. All these things that you have learned and received and heard, he said, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. The God of peace. When we do these things, the things that we have learned, received, and heard, when we do them, the God of peace will be with us. The devil and man, they want, it, they want their own way. They want to be independent from the Lord. When self is put first, peace is, not, peace is last. When you put self first before the Lord, then peace is... In fact, peace is probably not even, it's not even there. We have too many people, a lot of people, they don't want to give up self. And until, until they give up self, they will have heartaches. They will go through burdens that will really, I mean, that will really bring them down. We, we have those, but we have the Lord to carry us. We have the Lord, the Lord to carry us through these times. They don't. God's peace never evades anything. Never evades any kind of issues. It don't hide from any problems. Whatever problems you got, whatever problems you have, God can give you peace in it. He can. There's not one problem you can tell me, well, I, I don't have peace in it. If you don't have peace in it, it's because you haven't received what the Lord has for you. Okay? Because the Lord has peace for whatever problem you have. He's got peace for you. He doesn't excuse any kind of problems and say... Well, that one I can't handle. No, the Lord, whatever your problem is, the Lord can give you peace on it. I mean, can, and do y'all hear the Word of God? Don't listen to me. But do you hear the word, what the Word of God is saying? We can have peace in Him, no matter what. No matter what. With the peace of God, we confront, we can confront our problems and not struggle with them. We do not have to struggle with whatever problems we have. Only Christians, only Christians can have this kind of peace. Only Christians. Now, in Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Like I said, for the lost people there is no peace. Because of the devil, which is their enemy, he has blinded their eyes. John 12, 40 says that. He had blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts 
that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, or be converted, and I should and I should heal them. That's, but this is what the devil has done to the, to the lost. He blinds them. They're blind to all this that we have. We're peacemakers. When the Lord said, blessed are the peacemakers, he's talking about us, born-again Christians, who take this peace, and we're going to get on it. We take this peace, and we take it to the people. We take it to them. We, don't, we use it for ourselves, but it's, a, it's also something that we take to the lost. The Lord told Paul on the road to Damascus, where he was born again, Acts twenty six eighteen to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people who are, who are set apart by faith in me. So until they give their lives to the Lord, they're under the power of the devil. They're under the power. And just like I've said before, People don't, you know, well, I'm not under the devil. I believe in God. Believing in God is, is, does not get you to heaven. Because right here, the devil, I've showed you where the devil believes in God. In fact, the devil probably knows the scriptures better than we do. Yeah. And he's not going to heaven. Yeah, he, so until these, until these people understand that they're under the power of the devil, they're being blinded by him, their hearts are being hardened by him, that's what the scripture says. And until... and. The Lord gives them what they need to break through it. It's, it's up to them. they got the choice if they want to or not. James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. God's wisdom is first pure which we talked about, pure in heart. It's first it's pure, and then it's peaceable. If you don't have that pure in heart that we talked about before, earlier, if you don't have that pure in heart, it's kind of hard to have peace. Because to be pure in heart is to live for the Lord. To live for the Lord. All right? Hebrews twelve fourteen, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. A person who is lost cannot have the peace and holiness of God. And they won't see the Lord. They won't see the Lord. Only the Christians, like I said, only the Christians can see the Lord. Because we have opened our hearts to Him, and He's given us this peace. Isaiah 57, 21, it says, There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. And that's what I've been saying. There's no peace there. They don't know the peace that we have. We, uh, we have to really, and there's, and I have to do it too. I have to, when I read stuff like this, I'm like, man, you know, I got peace. I have the peace of God in me. You know, the wicked, they don't have this peace. We are privileged and honored to have this peace from God. We have something that the world does not, we have a lot of stuff that the world doesn't have. But this is one of them. We can have peace in our life, no matter what. No matter what. I, that, no matter what that I put in there, believe that. No matter what, He can take care of it. We can have peace in it. Now, also being a peacemaker, this is why the Lord has called us peacemaker, is to bring His people back to this peace. Remember that peace started with Adam and Eve, and then they messed up? And it messed up all of us. Well, those of us who have been born again, accepted the Lord, now we have that peace. Now He wants us to take this peace that we have and witness to the lost and try to get them back to the Lord, to where we, where we once was before Adam and Eve sinned. If we love, if we love people that are around us, whether it be family, friends, no matter who, if we love them like we say we do, or maybe even show it in ways, if we love them, we will tell them about this peace. We will witness to them. Being a peacemaker is being a witness for the Lord. It's being a witness. We will witness to them. For those who want it, 
They'll receive it. But we have to bring it to them. Christians who are truly born again are truly born again. Are the ones who have this peace. And they're the ones who are going to be walking in the Spirit. And when you're walking in the Spirit, the verses, the Scriptures say, they're drawn by the Spirit. Like I said before, churches, I don't know too many here, but in Houston where they got bowling alleys and pool tables and all that stuff to attract people, that's not gonna that's not gonna turn people to the Lord. It's gonna give them a place to to play, you know. But that's not attracts them to the Lord. That does not attract them to the Lord. The Bible, the Lord plainly says they're drawn by the Holy Spirit. So we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit when we go to witness to people. If we go to witness to them in the in the flesh, and the way we do that is when we go by a, a A B C program, which I've told y'all before. If we go by a program that we've been taught in church. You're not going to get to them. Programs are not led by the Spirit. Just like I said before, programs. The girl that took that class that I talked about one time when they had soul winning class. Well, not long after that, she came up to me and she said, you know, I was, I was talking to somebody about the Lord and I was going through this program that they taught me. But I felt like I needed to say something else instead of that. And I told her, I said, listen to me. I said, don't ever put a program over what the Holy Spirit is trying to say through you know use you to say don't ever put a program a man's program over what the Holy Spirit wants to do we need to remember that soul winning don't need us a class on soul winning all you need to tell people is what got you there that's all you need you don't need to know this well you I don't know enough Bible no but you had you know enough to where you got saved and whatever got you there that might be the only thing that person needs to get there. So don't don't think you need to know all this and no, they're drawn by the Holy Spirit. So if you're moving in the spirit, if you're walking with the Lord, you can be a witness. You can draw people to the Lord. In Second Corinthians chapter five, verses eighteen through twenty. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Reconciling the world. The world. Not some people. You know, I don't know what the Calvinists did with this verse. When they say, oh, only so many. No, right here it says, reconciling the world. The world. He didn't say just so many people. Like Calvinists believe. There's so many that are chosen. No. No. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. This is it. This is our ministry right here. This is why we're born again. We're not born again so we can just go on with our life, doing whatever we want to do. We get born again so the Lord can use us as His ambassadors. As soon as you get born again, you become a peacemaker. And a peacemaker is this. We represent the Lord. These ambassadors that uh, you, you know, in these other countries, we have ambassadors for our nation over here. Well, if you look at them, you know, they're nice. They're all dressed, trim and proper, you know. They represent us, the Americans. Well, we need to do the same thing with the Lord. We need to do the same thing with the Lord. We represent Christ. We are ambassadors. For those of us, and I'm pretty sure all of us in here know what ambassador means. We represent the Lord. We need... I don't put a sticker on my on my bumper, anything about Christians, because sometimes I don't drive that way. <laughs> I don't and I, the reason I don't is because I mean why, why I drive that way I'm not the reason I don't have the stickers how, how am I representing the Lord if I'm if I'm cutting somebody off you know I cut somebody off and they see that sticker on me on my car so I don't put a sticker on my car I shouldn't do it but I have <laughs> but anyway we're we're ambassadors those of us we need to See, we need to wake up in the morning 
and remember, remind ourselves until it just comes naturally, and it will. But we need to remind ourselves in the morning when we wake up and say, hey, today I need to represent the Lord. Today I'm going to represent the Lord. It's either going to be a good one or a bad one. But we will represent our God today. And I know as far as I'm concerned, and I'm pretty sure it's with y'all too, I don't think you want to be a bad rep. Not for after what the Lord's done for us. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard to persuade others. God knows our sincere, and I hope you know this too. So the Lord said, this is our, resp- our responsibility as ambassadors. And he says we ought to be very sincere about it. And not only that, he says we ought to work hard on persuading others, witnessing to other people. This is a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers. We are peacemakers. Those of us who live for the Lord are peacemakers. We're supposed to take this, what we know of God, to the lost people. This is who we are. We have, like I said, we have families, friends, co-workers who are lost. And we just keep on acting like there's nothing wrong. We get around them, we act like, you know, it's okay. Because we don't want to offend them. I'm not saying that's true for all of us in here, but I know it is true for some. That we do not want to offend our brother or our sister or uncle, aunt, whoever. Friends, co-workers, we don't want to offend them. Proverbs 28.13 He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. We need to tell them, if you think your sins are not so bad and they're trying to cover them up, they're not going to prosper. And right here it's not talking about money. They're going nowhere with their life. They will not have the mercy of God. We need to tell them that. Man, I don't know if I can do that. No, yes you can. If you love the person like you say you do, you can tell them. I'd rather offend somebody and, and at least have them know, hey, this is where you're going and this is where you can go, than not to offend them and just let them head on to where they're going. Seriously. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, tell them, let them get offended, but at least, and I'm going to get more on that in a minute, but our, our, that's, Blessed are the peacemakers. First I showed you how God gave us peace. And now he's showing us, okay, take that. and go. Now we're peacemakers. Now we need to go out there and show these people what this peace of God can do for us. What can, can, can do for them. Another one is Isaiah 55, 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon him. Now the Lord, now the Lord, right here, what's he called lost people? What's he calling? This is lost people we're talking about. What's he calling? Wicked. They're wicked. He doesn't sugarcoat anything. When Jesus was here, he didn't sugarcoat anything. When he was right there and standing stand in front of the, uh, the religious leaders and called them hypocrites, called them vipers, snakes, <laughs> He didn't sugarcoat anything. I mean, if they're, if you're lost, you're lost, and the Lord says you're wicked. Like the pastor said in one of his sermons a few weeks ago, he said, uh, "What's the difference? What's the difference between a lost person and those of us who are Christians, and but we don't witness?" I really like that. That should have spoke to a lot of us. What's the difference between you and a lost person? If you're not witnessing about the Lord. Amen? And that was a mouthful. And he's right. What is the difference? Lost people ain't going to tell you anybody about the Lord. And we who have the Lord, we're not doing a very good job for the Lord. We're not being very good ambassadors. We're not being very good at witnessing to people. I mean, just this last week, twice I ran into Jehovah Witnesses. Twice. I think I told you all about last Wednesday. That one I was nice. But then I ran to him at my mother's house. That one I wasn't too nice. I'm not going to tell you what I said, but I wasn't too nice. Because they're bringing, they're bringing another gospel that sends people to hell. And that makes me mad. 
We talked about righteous anger before. To me, I believe that's a righteous anger. When someone is coming to your family or to your friends and, and trying to preach them to them another gospel that sends you to hell. That really gets to me. So that one time that I told you all about, I was nice, talked to the guy. But this last time, because it was at my mother's house, glad y'all weren't there. I mean, I wasn't ugly or cursed or anything, but I did let him know what I thought about him. All right? And biblically, biblically, if they come to your house, the Bible says not to let them in. If anybody comes to your house with another gospel, the Lord says don't let them in. So if you see Mormons coming to your house or Jehovah's Witnesses, don't let them in your house. The Bible, that's a commandment from the Lord. Do not let them in your house. Now the servants of the devil, I hate to say this, but the servants of the devil are doing a lot better job than we are. They're doing a lot better job of getting people to turn to their belief than what we're doing, turning people to God, to the Lord. They really are. I mean, Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, they're lost. They have another gospel, and they're out there. I'm not saying we need to go door to door, but I am saying we need to, whoever walks across us, whoever comes our way, that's who we need to witness to. But the servants of the devil are out there door to door. They're doing a better job. We have the real truth. And we're not doing what we should be doing. I'm talking about as a whole. Now some of us are, but there's a lot of us who are not. And right here, this teaching, I hope this teaching touches us. I hope this teaching tells us, hey, that's the word of God. I need to start doing it. I need to start doing it. I need to start witnessing to people. Romans 10, verses 14 through 16. And then shall they call on him whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe in him whom of, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now when it says preacher here, it's not talking about a pastor. Anybody who's a born again Christian, out there witnessing, you're preaching. So this is who is talking to us. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Well, I've shown you the scriptures where we have been sent. As it is written, now listen, as it is written... How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, of peace. This is the way God looks at us. When you're out there witnessing, when you're out there telling people the lost, trying to turn them to the Lord, He says it right here. He said, man, how beautiful your feet are. This is coming from God. Amen? That's a compliment from our Father saying, hey, if you're out there doing this, you're, how beautiful your feet are. Amen? When we read the Scriptures... We need to read the scriptures. We need to read them. Right here, how beautiful are your feet? The Lord is telling me how beautiful your feet are for being a witness. Verse 16, For they have not obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, as saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So there's going to be many who won't believe what you say. There's going to be many, because like I've said several times, broad is the gate that goes to destruction, which is hell. And narrow is the gate that goes to heaven. So there are going to be a lot of people who, who are not going to believe you. A lot of people. And, I, and like it did me, it discouraged me to where I didn't want to do it. But then the Lord spoke to me. Hey, I'm with you. You just keep doing it. You just keep planting those seeds. Because maybe they didn't get saved then. But remember, we plant seeds. Somebody else watered it. And maybe another person watered it. And then another person watered it. And finally they started to bloom. So don't get discouraged. Just plant the seed. If they don't say, oh yeah, I want to accept the Lord. At least you planted the seed. Be full of joy, happiness, this peace. Because you've planted a seed in a lost person. The seed is there. Some of us use the excuse that we need to earn their respect. We need to... Be friends with them before we witness to them. Uh, I challenge anybody to show me in the Bible where the Lord became friends with them first before He did anything. I challenge anybody. No, uh, Everyone the Lord came on to, the very first time, He told them right there on the spot. All of us in here should be witnessing. You can go, as, as it says in Matthew, as you're, going, as you're going through life, you witness. You witness to people. Now, me, when I first got born again, whew, man, I was excited. I mean, at first I told everybody in my family, 
Then I started going to the hospitals, just going into rooms. I started going to the mall, just going up to people. Do you know the Lord? I mean, I was fired up for the Lord. I was. I mean, I knew I had something, and I wanted other people to know it. Started going to the drill ministry with Brother Wu that Rex knows. I mean, I was, and that really hasn't died. It's just I'm not that active, <laughs> but I do. The Lord, the Lord has put it on me to be hungry to reach lost people. All of us in here, every one of us in here, ought to have that hunger because he's told us to. He says, we all, if you're a born-again Christian, every one of us have the ministry of reconciliation. It's not the pastor's job, it's our job. That's our ministry. So we should have that kind of hunger to tell others about, about the Lord. I mean, Jesus, like I said, Jesus didn't, didn't sugarcoat it. He didn't, well, let me become friends with this guy first or, or get to know him and do things with him and then I'll, no. Because guy, this guy ain't promised that he's going to be here tomorrow so you can do that too. He ain't here, he's not promised to be here tomorrow. So why are you wasting time? The Lord didn't do it that way. He went straight to the point. He went straight to the point with the loss. And, and uh, John chapter 4, I don't think you have that on your papers, but in John chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, when you talk to the Samaritan woman at the well, he didn't hesitate to confront her. I mean, that's the first time they talked. He didn't hesitate to confront her and tell her, and tell her of her sinful ways. She said she wasn't married. And they said, no, but you had five husbands. And the one you're living with now, you're, you're not married to him. Now, real quick, let me see if I can do this in 30 seconds. The reason God said you have five husbands is because the one you have intercourse with, that's, that's who your husband is, biblically. And I have a teaching on that. The, the person you have intercourse with, and it, that's when marriage begins in the Bible, is intercourse. They didn't have no, it wasn't no pastor and license and blood work. In the Bible, they, they'd get together, have a party, and then the couple would go in the room. And when they came out, they were married. So intercourse, that's why the Lord said, you have five husbands. Because she married with five different guys. But anyway, what I'm showing here, he just met her. And he went straight to the point. He didn't, he didn't get to know her. Got to be friends with her. A lot of times we do that. But that's not the way the Lord does it. Now, with me, there's times when the Lord, He tells me to witness somebody. I'll witness to Him. And sometimes I'm easy on Him. And that's the way the Lord leads me. But then there's times the Lord has led me to go to somebody and drop the hammer on them. And I don't know if it's because He's been telling this guy, other seeds have been planted in Him and and now he's really getting tough with this guy. So I'm led by the Spirit. It leads me to be easy on a person, but tell them the truth. Or sometimes, like I said, sometimes I drop the hammer on them. And that's biblical too. In Ezekiel, which I've, I've talked to you all about this one before, but I'm going to say it again. In Ezekiel, he called us uh, Ezekiel watchmen. He's called us watchmen. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17 through 19, Son of man... I have made thee a watchman on to the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn from his wickedness, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Now, this is what the Lord, is. He, this is for us. We're watchmen. And just like he says right here, we need to warn the wicked of their wicked ways. If they turn to the Lord, amen. If they don't turn to the Lord, we're free from their blood. And in Acts, the New Testament, referring back to Ezekiel and the Old Testament, in Acts twenty twenty six, Paul said, Wherefore I take you to record this day, that I am pure from the blood of all men. So Paul was Paul saying here is what Ezekiel was saying. Paul saying, I have 
warned everyone that's come my way, I have warned them of their wicked ways. And so Paul can say, I'm pure from the blood of men. There's no man going out, out there that's going to hell because I didn't witness to him. Now, how many of us want to be like this? How many of us want to say the same thing Paul said? That I'm pure from the blood of all men. We, not be, we, not, we might not be able to say it right now, but we can get to that point. We can. We can. Paul did it, and uh, we can do it. Don't let the devil say you can't. Because he's the one that's going to keep you from doing it. He will give you every excuse you need to stop you from witnessing. Oh, well, you don't know the Bible. You know, that's a lie. Or you're too shy. That's a lie. You got the Holy Spirit. Everyone in here has the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not shy. Now, what in Ezekiel, when he says, uh, but his blood will require at thy hand, to me, I got that that's, you know, like I said, we've had, we have rewards when we go to heaven. I believe you lose rewards for not witnessing. And then when he says, but thou hast delivered thy soul, our soul, he's just saying we're blameless. We're blameless from not witnessing. This is what we need to do. Paul was just a man. And we can, we can do it. If he could do it, there's no reason why we can't do it. Because he's got the same Holy Spirit that we have. Same one. And Paul was a man like us. Yeah, and you cannot use... Believe me, if you need a thousand excuses on why not to witness, the devil get, will give them to you. We need to quit listening to them. We need to quit listening to excuses on why not to witness. Because this is our ministry. This is, this is a commandment from the Lord. We're peacemakers. He's a blessed are the peacemaker. We're going to be blessed for this. We're going to be blessed for being witnesses. He said, this is, this is your responsibility. This is your ministry. I've made you ambassadors. Amen? Amen? We need to take this serious. We don't just get born again and go to church on Sundays and Wednesdays. That's not what being a Christian is. If that's what y'all think it is, well, the Beatitudes, I'm sure, has changed, have, has changed the way you think about that. Beatitudes, Beatitudes is for people who want to walk in the Spirit. If you're satisfied with just coming to church on Sunday and Wednesday and you think that's good enough, right, you don't want to know the Beatitudes. Because right here, the Lord puts you to work. The Lord says, I want you to do. I want you to be a doer. In uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 16, then he said to his disciples, Anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who is rejecting me is rejecting God who sent me. I guess I should have read this one to the Jehovah Witness, huh? <laughs> huh? They believe in God. They believe in Jehovah God. But Jesus? Hmm. So right here, it says anybody who rejects Jesus is rejecting me. God. So if, if, for some reason you ever run across a Jehovah Witness, ask them what they do with this verse right here. Because they sure don't accept. They think Jesus was just another man. Not the Son of God. I mean, they think He was just a prophet like Moses and the rest of them. So right here, right here it says it plainly. If you reject Jesus, you're rejecting God. How can they accept God but not accept the Son? It just makes them a liar. John Chapter 5, verse 23. That all men should honor the Son, even as thy honor, honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which has sent me, sent him. Also in Second John, verse, uh, verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Amen? So Jehovah's Witnesses, remember just these verses right here tell you that they're a cult. These verses right here, this is all you need to show that they're a cult. And I've told you before, one thing all cults have in common, all cults, they have one thing in common, none of them believe Jesus is God. And this goes for us too. If they're not listening to us, if they're rejecting what we say from the Word, then they're rejecting the Lord. They're rejecting God. Same thing. There's a price to pay here on earth. But in heaven, like I said a while ago, for us doing this, there's going to be rewards for us. For what we do for the Lord. 
And one of the one of the do's we have that the Lord said to do is be a peacemaker. Look at the disciples. Some of them were stoned to death for preaching Jesus. Others were crucified. Some got their heads cut off. Do we have to fear that? Now, if we had to fear that, I'm not going to excuse it because they did it. But I'm not going to excuse it, but it would be scary. <laughs> I mean, it would be scary that we could get killed for doing this. But we're in a country where we're not, they're not going to kill us for doing this. So we shouldn't even fear death for witnessing. These disciples did, and they did it. They had to fear death, and they did it. Why? Because they were disciples. And what are we in this room? We're disciples of the Lord. We are disciples. Now, we can be disciples like them and witness. And like I said before, in some countries, this still happens. But in this country, it doesn't. So there's no reason why we shouldn't be out there. There's no reason we shouldn't be telling our, our, our friend at work about the Lord. We shouldn't be telling whoever's lost in our family about the Lord. We shouldn't. If we love them, that would be the main reason to tell them is because you love them. You don't want to see your mother, your daddy, your grandmother, your grandfather, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your aunt, cousins. You don't want to see none of them go to hell. I don't, want, I don't even want to see my enemy go to hell. So if you, don't want, if you don't want to see them go to hell, then why aren't we saying anything? And I'll, I, maybe I'm not talking to anybody in this room because maybe y'all all have done that. I hope. But if you haven't, this is why you should. This is why you should. One, because God's made us a peacemaker. He's made us. This is our ministry. He's given us this ministry. We do, do not have to be a pastor. It's not the pastor's job to go out there. It's our job. The pastor's job is to study the Word of God. That's his job. And feed his sheep, which we are. That's his job. It's our job to get people saved. And if they come to that church, praise God. People I witness to, I'll invite them to the church, but I'll tell them also, I said, you know, you can go, I can help you find a church. If, if you don't want to go to Baptist church, I'll help you find a Pentecostal church if that's where you want to go. Or another church. As long as it's not cold, I can help them find another one. I'm not like, well, you know, you need or you really need to come here. No. Churches, that, they're not that important to me on where they go. As long as it's a church of God. And there's, there's churches of God out there. I just want them to get born again. And we all should have that heart. All of us should have that heart. Disciples were killed. They were killed. And we don't even have to worry about that. The Lord's given us a special ministry. He's given us this special ministry to bring the, back those who were fallen from Adam and Eve, those who were fallen, because we were fallen, but we found the Lord. But we have a lot of them out there who are still fallen, and we need to go out there and preach to them. Romans 1.16. Now listen to this. Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Don't raise no hands, but can, can you say that? Don't raise no hands. Can you say that? I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because there's many ways you can show that you are without saying it. Matthew 10.33 But whosoever shall deny me before men, I will also deny before my Father which is in heaven. This is for the one who professed to be Christian, but when it comes to doing the will of God, we fail. Now, I'm not saying you, that you're losing your salvation here. But you're denying what the Lord can, can do for you when you're walking in the Spirit. But there's many ways we can deny the Lord. There's many ways we, we, we show that we're ashamed of, of Him. We can fail Him. We can, we can deny Him by just not saying nothing. That's denying Him. By not saying nothing. Like we went to the Grand Canyon with her parents and they got the sign saying how old the Grand Canyon is you know millions whatever right there there was a door to be open well you know what the world ain't been here that long that's what scientists say the Bible says the world's only been here about 6,000 years so there's all kind of ways you can, there, you can put your foot in there 
There's all kind of ways. But we don't say nothing. We read them and then we don't tell the person next to us anything. That that's not true. So being silent is a way of denying the Lord. Are, you, are y'all hearing me? Are y'all? I really, not me, but do you hear what God is trying to tell us? Hey, ain't I special to you? Ain't I special enough to you that you want to tell other people about me? Haven't I saved you from hell? Haven't I given you this peace that you needed? So why is it so hard to go tell people about me? This is the message we're, we're, we're hearing tonight. The power of God, it says. What is the power of God? This right here. The Word. This is the power of God. We have the Holy Spirit in us. But unless we know this, we can't let the Holy Spirit work. Okay, we got to know this. So the Lord, what the Bible says, so He can bring it to our memories. We read it, and then later on, maybe a year, two years, next day, but then He brings it back to our remembrance, what we read. He does. He has to, because me, I got a very sharp memory, so He has to bring it back to my memory. Now, there's men out there, this feel-good gospel that we get a lot, and a lot of times it's in concerts. You go to concerts, I've been to them. Carmen concert. I've been to concerts where, man, everybody in there is fired up. I mean, they're fired up. But uh, after the concert's over, they go back to their normal life. Men who get up and preach and jump all over the place, wave their hands, motivational speakers, which we have many. You got preachers, they're more of a motivational speaker than preaching. Do you hear what I'm saying? They're more, because we're easy motivated. We are. But that motivation ain't going to give you no, ain't going to help you out there when you're out there fighting the devil. This is what's going to help you out there when you come across temptation. This. Not getting all fired up because a guy was a great motivational speaker. But he got, he got you all fired up, or whether it's a group that got you all fired up, a singing group, you know, that's not going to help you. That comes, and that's only temporary. This is to stay. When you get this in you, you got this. And it's not just for a little while. So, yeah, some of us, you know, we go, we get all excited when we hear whoever, whether it be a preacher or we go listen to a concert. and Because I see it. Uh, but that's not going to help you. At that time, yeah, you feel good. But when you get back into the lost world, it's not there. But this is the Bible. This is very serious. We should be witnessing for the Lord, without a doubt. That is why we're here. We do not get born again and then just go on about our way. And watch who you listen to. Watch who you listen to. We think we got some good preachers and teachers out there because, ooh, man, he got all excited. If they were getting you excited over this, the, the, the scriptures, amen. So be careful who you listen to and what they're preaching or teaching. Now, if you don't witness the lost people, it could be that you're allowing the devil, again, to lie to you. Ephesians, and it's the devil. Ephesians 16, 12, we've all read this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's the devil. It's the devil the one, he's the one that's saying, don't do it. Don't do it. And whatever excuse he uses, and you listen to it, you didn't wrestle against him. The Bible says here, we wrestle against him. we got to say, uh-uh, no, I'm not listening to you. I'm going to listen to my Father. I'm going to listen to the Lord. Lord told me to do this. You're not going to put it on me that I'm too shy to do this. Or I'm too embarrassed. Or I'm ashamed. No, I'm not going to listen to that. Are y'all, are y'all hearing me? Please listen to me. Please. We need to be out there. People are going to hell every day. People are going to hell. All these funerals you go to, every one of them, everybody goes to heaven. Oh, he's in a better place now. It's a lie. They're not in a better place. There's a country. And there's more than half of those funerals, those people are dead. Yeah. We need to be out there telling people about the Lord. 
Because we do wrestle against the spirit world. That's who we're wrestling against. Now, if we've been doing that, praise God. All we got to do is say, God, forgive me. That's all we got to do. And He will, if it's coming from our heart. He will forgive us. But me, I really didn't need the Lord to tell me about that. I didn't know these scriptures. I didn't really need Him to tell me that I need, this was my ministry. This is something I wanted to do. I was, I was proud, excited that I was a born-again Christian, that I found the Lord. I wanted to talk about the Lord. It wasn't something that I was told that I had to do. John 21. Well, I didn't put the chapter down. John something, verses 21 and 22. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Well, anyway, it says, Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He breathed on us. He said, receive the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he said that's the only way they're going to be reached. It's through him. Through the Holy Spirit. We need to learn from his disciples. Because what did his disciples do? When they, when they found out who Jesus was. John 141. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. So Simon's brother right here said, Look, I found the Lord. I found the Messiah. And he went straight to his brother. He went straight to his family. And was excited to tell them. Oh, that's chapter 20. Chapter 20 on that John verses 21 and 22. How do you get that? You just look it up. Huh? You want to get up here? <laughs> I'm just joking. But anyway, I'm just, he went to his family and said, Hey, look, brother, who I found. Also, John 1, 45, Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, the son of Joseph. These disciples were, when they found Jesus, they were excited. And what's the first thing they did? They went to their families. He went to their brother. And, that, and I'm not saying I did it because they did it. That's just, that's what I did. When I got born again, I, I, my father, my mother, my sisters, my brothers, I told everybody. And this is coming from one who was uh, a partier. I mean, I was just a plain partier. I partied all the time. That was my middle name, probably. I mean, that's all I did was party. And when I found the Lord, and, and, and a lot of my friends, well, some of them accepted it, and some of them didn't. Some of them were like, ah. And then some were, some were like, they were serious. They were like, you know, that that's good, you know. They didn't want it, but they thought that was good for me, which it was. But what I'm trying to show is we need to be like that. You know, when you first got born again, if, you, if those of you in here who got born again, which I believe all of you are, when you got first born again, I'm sure it was an excitement for you. I'm sure it was an excitement for you. Well, you need, you need that back. You need it back. If you don't have it, you need to say, Lord, put that excitement back in me. Put it back in me, because I want to get fired up like that. I want to be excited to go tell people about you, because I'm not ashamed. Matthew chapter 4, verse 12. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I, I will show you how to be fish, to fish for people, fishermen of people. The Lord, Jesus said, I. Jesus will show you how to do it. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. He will give you the power. He will show you. He will give you the words to say when it's time to witness to somebody. I mean, this, well, I don't know what to say. Well, walk in the Spirit, and the Spirit will give you the words to say. I promise you, the Lord will give you the words. The Lord will give you the words. I mean, out of no word, you, if you're talking to somebody, and then all of a sudden, you'll hear the Spirit. You'll hear them. Then it's your responsibility to obey. It's to listen and give it. Trust in the Lord. We've got to trust in the Lord. Okay, Lord, here I am. I mean, there's. I, I know this person's lost. Give me the words, and he will. He's not going to say, no, nah, I don't want that person to get saved. No, because what I read before, he said, he, he to him, he would wish all would be saved. He, he wants everyone to come to him. So he's not going to tell you no on somebody. 
Exodus 33, verse 16. How will anyone know that you look favorably upon me, on me, on me and on your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. So again, he's saying, hey, Lord, you need to come with me because that's what's going to set us apart. So the Lord is going to be with us. Depend on the Lord to be with you out there. Depend on it. Paul, Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, he says, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, from whom? From the Lord. That I may open my mouth boldly, boldly, to make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am an, an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen? Did y'all hear? Did, this is amen. We don't go out there whispering or are scared to say it. He said boldly here. Well, go out there with boldness when you, well, when you witness. Look, and we all know when Paul was in prison, guards got saved. Yeah. yeah. And their families. And their families. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Paul and we have the same boldness. We can. We can. I hope you all hearing me. You can have the same boldness that Paul had. You can go out there with power. Not not be intimidated or, or embarrassed or shy or whatever. No. The, the same Holy Spirit that moved Paul is the same Holy Spirit that's in you right now and in me. Right now. There's no difference at all. If we don't use this boldness, it's because we don't want to. We have choose not to use it. We have. It's not because you don't have it. If you say you don't have it, then you're saying, I don't have the Holy Spirit. And i just shown you right here, it, this is our ministry. Right here it says it. It's our ministry. And then he says, not only do it, but he says, I want you to do it in boldness. Amen? In boldness. First Peter chapter 4, verse 11, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. So you don't do it. Don't go out there and think you're on your own. God has given every one of us the ability to do this. When you leave this class tonight, there is no excuse, none, zero, that you can't go out there and witness. Y'all hear me? If you don't, I'm just being honest with you. If you don't, you're just you're just flat out disobeying God. That's it. John six forty four, and this is it right here. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. Like I said, they're drawn by the Holy Spirit. So all we need to do, and I say all because it's really pretty simple. Go out there in the Spirit. Go out there in, in the Spirit with boldness, with the ability that God has given us and witness to those people. And guess what? Blessed are the peacemakers. You want to be blessed? Be a peacemaker. This is what this, that one verse, that one verse, all those scriptures you got in your hands, all those scriptures covered this one verse. I noticed that today when I was making copies here in the office. I was, there was four copies, four pages. I'm like, man, I'm using four pages of scriptures just to teach one verse. <laughs> amen? Mm-hmm. But amen, that's from God. The Lord has given me all these, these verses. The Lord has. Remember, whatever you do, whatever you do, make sure you look past this, this shell right here. Make sure you look past this shell. Because Jesse is a mud. It's mud and still being, I'm still being molded. Okay? So none of this, none of this. This is all from the Lord. The Lord has you. Tonight, what does it say right here? If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Well, tonight I was God's oracles. He spoke to you through me. Amen.